Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will be looking at the application of hypergeometric distribution. Let's start with an example. Suppose there are 16 cars available for you to test drive. The car dealer has already told you 5 out of these 16 cars have turbo engines. If you test drive 3 of the cars, what is the probability that 2 of the 3 cars that you test drive will have turbo engines? This is a typical example for hypergeometric distribution that we would like to answer here. The hypergeometric distribution is a discrete distribution. It can be used to model the number of events in a fixed sample size when you know the total number of desired items in the whole population the sample is coming from. Each item in the sample has two possible outcomes, either an event or non-event. For this example, turbo or non-turbo engine car. The samples are without replacement, so every item in the sample is different. When an item is chosen from the population, it cannot be chosen again. When you test drive a car, you don't test drive the same car again. Therefore, an item's chance of being selected increases on each trial, assuming that it has not yet been selected. For first time, 5 out of 16 cars are turbo. Next time, if the turbo car is not selected, 5 out of 15 cars will be turbo. It's more probable now, isn't it? Let's look at another example of hypergeometric distribution. You receive 500 parts. They tell you 2% of parts are defective. So, the number of events in the population is 10. Is 2% multiplied to 500. You sample 40 parts and want to know the probability of 3 or more defective parts in that sample. But before answering this question, let's define the hypergeometric probability distribution function mean and variance. Okay, the hypergeometric distribution is defined by three parameters, population size, n, even count in population D and sample size N. In this example, N capital N is 500. The number of defective items in population is 10. And sample size is 40. And we are looking for three or more defective parts. So X could be three or four or 10 defective parts at most. Just plug in these numbers in this equation and find the cumulative probability or the summation of P3, P4, P5 till P10. In Minitab, we can easily find the answer. Go to Graph menu, then Probability Distribution Function, then select hypergeometric distribution from drop-down menu. Enter 500 for population size and 10 for even count and 40 for sample size. Go to shaded area tab, select X value and right tail and enter three or more defective items. It's right of the tape. It means three or more. And finally, hit OK. As you can see, the total probability is around 3.84%. Let's go back to the turbo car example. Simply plug in 16 instead of N, 5 instead of D, and 3 instead of the small N, and 2 instead of X. The probability that you will randomly select exactly two cars with turbo engines when you test drive three of the 16 cars is 19.64%. You can get the same result from Minitab. 
go to calculation menu and select probability distribution and select hypergeometry and then enter these values. The result will be 19.64%. The last topic which I would like to talk about is the difference between the hypergeometric and the binomial distributions. Both the hypergeometric distribution and binomial distribution describe the number of times an event occurs in a fixed number of trials. For the binomial distribution, the probability is the same for every trial. For the hypergeometric distribution, each trial changes the probability for each subsequent trial because there is no replacement. So, Use the binomial distribution with large populations that the outcome of the trial has almost no effect on the probability that the next outcome is an event or non-event. For example, in a population of 100,000 people, 53,000 have O positive blood type. The probability that the first randomly selected person in a sample as O positive blood is 53%. If the first person in a sample has O positive blood, then the probability that the second person has O positive blood is 0.529995. The difference between these probabilities is small enough to ignore most applications. Use the hypergeometric distribution with populations that are so small that the outcome of the trial has a large effect on the probability that the next outcome is an event or non-event. For example, in a population of 10 people, 7 people have O positive blood. The probability that the first randomly selected person in a sample has O positive blood is 70%. If the first person in the sample has O positive blood, then the probability that the second person has O positive blood is 66.66%. As you can see, the difference between these probabilities is too large to ignore for many applications. Okay, let's solve previous examples in MATLAB. For this question, we can use hypergeometric probability distribution function. The first argument is number of success x, which is 2. The second argument is the size of population, which is 60. The third argument is the number of items with desired characteristics in the population. In this case, it's 5 turbo cars in 16 cars. And the fourth argument is the sample size, which is 3. We have choice of 3. The answer is 19.6%. Let's solve this question. For this question, we can use hypergeometric cumulative distribution function, since we are looking for 3 or more defective parts. 3 or more defectives is equal to 1 minus two or few defective parts. The first argument is number of sizes x, which is two or less. The second argument is the size of population, which is 500. The third argument is the number of items with desired characteristic in the population, in this case is 10. And the fourth argument is the sample size, which is 40. The answer is 3.8%. All right, in this video, we covered the hypergeometric distribution. In the next videos, we are going to talk about other important discrete and continuous distribution. Thank you. We are going to release video series on different topics, including application of statistics in manufacturing and quality control, robotics and mechatronics, industrial machine vision, system dynamics, finite element analysis with abacus, GDNT and tolerance analysis, and many other interesting topics. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to get notified when a new video on this topic is released.